Oh my god. It's huge. update finally. Uh, as you can see, I've made quite a bit of progress on my two whips. Uh, you just saw Crystal Peacock and I want to say that I have maybe a third left to do. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it after it's finished, but it's been really fun working on it. Uh, it's very sparkly. It's very huge. <laughs> As you've seen, I've already got about two or three more uh, waiting for me to start and unbox for you guys if you're interested. This is Hocus Pocus. Uh, I have come a long way from the very small now, comparative wise, black blob that I showed you guys several months ago. I now have Mary's hair, Winnie's hair, and the start of Sarah's hair. So uh, hopefully I can get their faces in before Halloween. I'm really gonna enjoy stitching on this, watching Hocus Pocus. You know, with the start of October, probably I'll start watching all those cool Halloween movies. And um, that, was, that was my plan last year. I was supposed to be here last year, but still working on the Disney villains. So this year I plan on watching Hocus Pocus, stitching on this with the pumpkin candle going, and uh, that is my idea of heaven. So, you can see the tops here. Right now, like I said, I'm working on Sarah's hair. And then this page, it ends somewhere around here, so this is gonna be the beginning of the other tree. And then I have like half of a page that comes to here, and that's all gonna be the tree, and then I can start down here which is going to be the start of Mary's face. So that's exciting. <laughs> uh, hopefully, here's a closer look for you guys. And this is Hocus Pocus by Tilton Crafts. And I'm doing this on 25 count white Lugana, two threads over one. And yes, in the beginning it was tight because I was using the wrong size needle. Needle size matters, guys. I think I was using the needle that came with my very first cross stitch kit, which was done on 14 count Ada. So <laughs> you can imagine how uh, tough that was to pull that needle through with two threads of um, doing two threads over one on 25 count. I almost gave up. But then my mom's friend bought me these amazing needles. I think they're called Bowen, and I could be pronouncing that wrong, but they glide through my fabric like butter and I will never go back. <laughs> I think they might be like a little bit more pricey than other needles on the market, but they're so worth it because they hardly ever break. The tarnish on this needle, I've um, this is the first one I've been using out of the pack. I think it's like a six pack. And the tarnish has worn off on some parts, or the finish, I guess, the finish has worn off. But, I mean, I really, I really don't notice it. It still glides through the fabric perfectly fine. So, um, sometimes I feel like it might break because it's a lot more thinner, a lot more thin than the needles used for 14 count. But um, it hasn't broken yet, so fingers crossed, we'll see. I know some of you guys break needles. And I think that I might be a needle breaker as well. <laughs> Moving on. I wrote down my notes. So hopefully I am organized because 
I have so much to show you guys. I've been away for too long. Um, journal. I bought this journal from, I think it was like just Barnes and Nobles or something. So last time I was doing my villains, I never wrote down how long it took me or when I was working on the piece. So I never really got a good idea of how long it would take me to do a page and how long it really took me to complete the project. So what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of writing down the date and then the times that I work on um, Hocus Pocus. So then at the end, I actually know how long it will take me to do a full coverage piece that is 30 pages, you know, something like this. So comparative to Hater, because I, I bought a bunch more of those too. Just so I know in the future how long it will take me, so I'm more like prepared and like, oh yeah, I could do that, no problem. <laughs> so, this journal so far has told me it takes me roughly 54 hours to complete one page, um, or 14 days. So I've done 54 hours in 14 days, and like, it's not, it's not on... Because I work. I work two jobs and I go to school. So 54 hours in two weeks essentially is pretty good. Because <laughs> I'm taking two classes at night and I work 40 hours a week plus I work on the weekends. I apologize for not uploading a video in a while because with school and work I haven't really had that much time to cross stitch until lately I think. Um, I put, I was working on it pretty steadily from when I first introduced this to you guys until probably the beginning of July. And then I literally just picked it up beginning of September, maybe like September 5th, and that was like the long Labor Day weekend. So that's when I started it. I picked it back up again and I started back up on page four. So I've, I've done quite a bit. Epic Pokemon. All right, so. Forgot to bring this close to me. Hold on one second, you're gonna wanna see this. Hey okay, guys, Epic Pokemon Cross Stitch. That's all generations of Pokemon, except for this newest generation they're releasing. I believe it's the seventh generation with Sun and Moon that comes out in November. Yes, I did pre order Moon. <laughs> anyway, uh, the Epic Pokemon Cross Stitch that I'm doing does feature all six generations of Pokemon. I got the fabric got the frame, I got most of the floss as of last video. Well, between now and then, I got all of the floss. So, this is just a portion of the floss because my friend's mom, she actually gave me about 100 skeins to do uh, this project with as well, but it's the older floss that needs to be washed first. So that is downstairs waiting to be washed to keep separate from the newer floss that does not have to be washed because it's color fast. So this whole bag is maybe two thirds of the floss needed for my Pokemon. And um, I just plan on, you know, like one night sitting down and with a cup of wine and doing like a reality television show marathon while I wine bobbins because <laughs> literally it's just it's a lot you don't even know um, the pattern is like 210 pages and I'm doing it on 22 count white hardanger I think that's how you say it I got a piece big enough from Nordic Needle they were the only cross-stitch website company that had the size that I needed in stock. So awesome. I think somebody on FlossTube actually recommended them to me, so thank you so much, or else I wouldn't have known what to do. I mean, I probably would have figured it out eventually, but you saved me a lot of time, so thank you. Um, yes, so I got all the floss. I don't think I have enough cardboard bobbins yet. So that is my next buying adventure for frame. So you all had recommended to me um, Mark II, which is actually what I wanted to go with from the beginning when I saw their floor sands. They're amazing. I did get it. Um, it's super easy to put together. I love it. It's huge. 
we were in the process of selling our house. Our house is off the market now for several reasons. I'm not going to go into it right now. Um, but I had to break it down like right after I got it. I had put it up. I was ready to start it because our realtor said that my craft room, this room, showed better with it broken down because it made the room feel small. Whatever. So um, we're probably going to relist our house maybe like spring of 17 so I feel like once I finish probably the peacock I'm gonna go ahead and set that floor stand back up I have pictures that I can show you guys but set up so maybe I'll try to insert that here if nothing happens I'm sorry I'm not fancy like you guys <laughs> I know nothing about editing videos sorry I'm from the stone age that brings me to the question of how would I go about washing the DMC colors that were not color fast. So yes, they all are DMC um, that my friend's mom gifted me, but they are not color fast. So I don't know how to wash them. I think like somebody said cold water or lukewarm water and then just let them sit or something, but I don't know because like you gotta wash them, right? But then how long do you let them dry until they're dry? <laughs> that sounds dumb, but like, you know, is there a time frame? How long does it usually take for it to dry? Because I don't want my house, you know, my counters filled with drying thread. My husband would flip out. So if you guys know an easy way, or if it's not easy, if you just know the process, if you could leave me a comment down below, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. That brings me to my haul. I got a lot of stuff guys. A lot of stuff for me. Maybe not a lot of stuff you know you guys are used to but it's a lot. So backstory right? Needle minders. Um, I probably didn't get my first needle minder until I started to watch Floss Tooth because I had no idea what they were or where to get them. And then I started to buy them on Etsy so I got like maybe five and I showed you guys in like one of my first videos and the obsession has grown since then <laughs> um, I don't know why I just I love them and I can't have enough even though I don't have enough pattern or projects to put them on I just want to buy them all so one of the Etsy stores she has an Etsy shop and she has a Facebook page Needleminder Obsessions I'll put the link down below I bought a couple of things for myself and I bought a present for my friend. So I've already given it to her so it's fine if I put it out there. For a sparkly Yoda because she is doing the Yoda cross stitch um, by Tilting Crafts. I forget what it's called. It's called like Master, Jedi Master. So she's doing that one and I got her a little blingy Yoda to go with it. So, this octopus um, on Hocus Pocus is actually from Needleminder Obsessions. It's just a bronze octopus. He's pretty cool. I liked him, so I bought him. And with that purchase, I also got this really cool blingy tree. I just thought it was really cool because look how sparkly it is, and it's like huge. Um, and then I got these cuties, uh, Deadpool, because I think when I made this purchase, like Deadpool just came out in theaters, and I had to have them because why not? And then this really cute frog, and this watch, I don't know, this pocket watch, it's just really cool, I liked it, so I had to have it. <laughs> and um, that is all that I've gotten from her so far. She's actually, I think she lives in Australia, so her needle minders are a little bit cheaper than local needle minder sellers. But having said that, she doesn't offer the wide, like as wide of a variety as one of the needle minder sellers that I have found. So her, she has a Facebook page. She doesn't have an Etsy, an Etsy shop that I know of, but her page is called Nifty Needle Nannies. And I know that I found out about this page 
from you guys on FlossTube, so I blame you. <laughs> um, I bought several things from her, and I love everything. And I plan on ordering a lot more, because she always has, like, the best stuff. So, here are two that I ordered. And this is, like, a really awesome cow skull. It's really cool and huge and heavy. And then these are two little Cairn Terriers. So I told you guys before in one of my videos that my very first dog was a Cairn Terrier. Her name is Ginger. I got her when I was seven and she passed away almost two years ago now. So my very first needle minder that's still in Hocus Pocus is that little terrier dog because she reminded me of Ginger. Well then I came across this needle minder. <laughs> And uh, this actually was, you know, she was white. She was Wheaton, but as she got older, all her fur turned white. So this is a much, I guess, better resemblance of her. And then um, when I had her, my mom also had a dog, a black Karen Terrier, and his name was Zeus. So this is Ginger and this is Zeus, and they're perfect. <laughs> um, some other stuff that I got from Julie, I think I might have shown you these before. But I can't remember, so I'm showing them again. I think this was my first purchase from her. And they're just a bunch of little Mickey heads. I got some Halloween ones, Mickey and Minnie. And then I got Christmas theme ones. They're very sparkly and I love them. And so another purchase. <laughs> I got red's my favorite color and I couldn't pass up this cute little m, &M. I had to have it. And then I got this cute pink sheep and the hand of the king from Game of Thrones. I'm sure like all of you know what I'm talking about. And this really glitzy, like, I don't know, pirate coin, Aztec coin. I don't know what to call it, but I love it. It's like pirate treasure. And I don't know how many of you know this, but I'm like obsessed with Totoro. So she released a couple of needle minders that are Totoro themed or inspired or just plain old Totoro so of course I had to have them and this is my favorite one because look at him he's so like fluffy and happy with life he's just like so sparkly and there's like the little Totoros and they're just too cute and then this really cool steam work steampunk elephant and it was summer, I think, when I ordered this. It's still summer, but whatever. It was like the beginning. So I had to have this blingy watermelon. Done. I'm almost done. <laughs> but not really. <laughs> so, some more I got. Look at this cute Totoro. I can't even with him. He is so cute. He's just plastic, but he's seriously adorable. And then I love, freaking love rock candy. So when she posted this, look how sparkly. Like, I couldn't even deny that. And then this I've seen on like several other people's projects and it's just too pretty to not even have. So when she bought more of these, I had to buy one because look how gorgeous that is. Last one guys for now of the needle minders. So I asked Jolie if she had any Pokemon themed needle minders to one prepare for my epic Pokemon cross stitch but also because I love Pokemon and I couldn't find any Pokemon needle minders anywhere not Etsy not eBay nowhere so I asked her if she had any or if she could make any and she ordered these just for me well you know because of my recommendation but she also ordered enough to sell to others so thank you Julie if you're watching this this really just made my entire month when you did this um I actually only ordered this Bulbasaur and this Pikachu and then this she, this little Pikachu she threw in for free as a gift so thank you Julie that was so nice so I have my little Pokemon needle minders ready for my epic Pokemon cross stitch um I still think she has most of these available, she of her needle minders. A lot of her needle minders, she only gets limited quantities of, so you would have to check her Facebook page, and I'll link her down below. In my last video, I'm pretty sure I showed you all the needle minder, the needle tin 
that I ordered from Clay by Kim. Uh, she has an Etsy shop and she does wonders with polymer clay. Well, I did another order, you guys, and it's too cute. So the first thing I got, I actually was using on Hocus Pocus for a while, but I took it off for the octopus. It's this really cute little flower with the tiniest bee, and there's like a little pearly bead guy in the center to add some sparkle. And it's so cool because I love this thing. It came with this, I guess, just to showcase where the needle goes or just as an extra little bit of detail. But your needle actually goes in that hole. So it doesn't go on top. So you always see this design. It goes inside of that hole. How cool. Oh, and the back. Isn't that so cute? I can't even. And it's just so tiny. I can't even explain it. Look at him. He's just so happy. As am I. Then the second thing that I purchased from her shop, I think I mentioned that I wanted the Kraken needle minder or the needle tin, and she posted more, so I knew I had to have it. As soon as I saw it posted, I was stalking her shop because they sell like hotcakes. So look, isn't that the cutest? I can't even. It's just, she is so talented, I can't even explain. And it just slides open. Um, yeah, and there's a little ne there's a little magnet right there, so that holds your needles. If you were to put your needles in there, you could put scissors in here if they fit. Like you could put a lot of little things in there. So and it just snaps closed, and it's so tiny. I love it. And it's purple. I love purple Krakens. I don't know why I'm just saying that because I love it so much. And then what uh, Kim did, because this was my second purchase, she included a little freebie. So awesome. She makes um, fairy doors out of clay. And this is a sticker. So she sent me a little freebie sticker of one of her fairy doors that she made. And she included a nice little thank you card for uh, doing a repeat purchase. So. Excellent products, excellent customer service. I love her and I will be purchasing from her again. She is in the process of releasing a lot of fall and Halloween themed needle minders and needle cases. So I am trying to maybe snatch one of those up because they're really cute. Um, she has this little bubbling cauldron that I've seen floating around, obviously I already purchased, but I really want that. And maybe like a Halloween themed needle tin case. I don't know. More haul. So in addition to those uh, needle minders and the purchases from Clay by Kim, I got a few magazines, just two, not that many. Um, so I got the World of Cross Stitching. Um, it doesn't say what issue it is. If it does, I can't find it, but it looks like this with the cute bunny on it. And I just went through and put some little markers of, um, on the pages of the projects that I would like to do. So I thought this little bath was really cute. Um, this isn't the pattern, so I could show this. So I thought that was just really sweet. Maybe, you know, be cliche, put it in my bathroom or whatever. Um, and then like there's a couple other things in here. I don't think I color coded it in any way. Maybe I did. I don't know. It's been so long ago. Oh, and then I really like this. Because it's of all things from Egypt. I don't know why. Then I got this magazine, 365 cross stitch designs. I don't even think this has a theme. It's just designs. Usually they have a theme, but this doesn't th seem to have a specific theme. It's just like, maybe it does. I don't know. It's like birthdays and weddings and new babies. So maybe it's like events, special occasions. So again, I marked a couple things that I would want to do. Here's a really cute one, some houses. I like that. And they have a lot of good um, suggestions for 
little cross stitch cards. I've never made anybody a cross stitch card before, but I like the idea of it. So if I were to do anything, I would probably use some designs out of this book. But then here's like a really cute Joan Elliott Halloween pattern, and I would totally do that. A couple other things in there too that I would stitch, but those are the only two magazines that I've gotten recently, maybe like this entire year. But you know, Christmas is coming up, so I'm probably going to get like a bunch of the Cross Stitch Christmas magazines because they usually always have a lot of patterns that I one day want to do. You guys, like probably the most important haul acquisition that I have acquired is from a Russian site. Do not ask me the name because I cannot pronounce it because it's in Russian, but I will link it below. Um, they do have a Facebook page, so I recommend that if you do find anything that you want to order, you send them a Facebook message and then tell them that you want to pay for it by PayPal because I swear I spent like two days trying to figure out how to pay for this thing and then just it wasn't, no, no. But, dude. So, I actually saw this from somebody else. Okay, so I found a card. They put one in there. This is the website. Again, I'll link it below because, yeah, I don't expect you to copy and paste that because you can't because it's a video. Okay, so tell me how gorgeous is this because I can't even tell you enough. Oh my god, is everything dropping out? Yes. I hope you could see that because I love it and it is cross stitch but it is entirely beaded. So the whole thing is like cross stitch with beads. So there is no threads showing through, it's just literally all beads and it's gorgeous. And they do actually have instructions in English. So plus one. Um, I had to make sure, obviously, before I purchased it, that I could read how to make this because I've never done a completely beaded cross stitch before. Um, funny thing, so when I was talking to them, they told me that they had to open the kit and take the needle out because for some reason when shipping to U.S., um, packages were sometimes not delivered to the recipient because the needle was a concern so the package got abducted i don't know what do you what do you call it confiscated <laughs> the package got confiscated by u.s customs and they couldn't deliver the package to the uh customer so they did take the needle out of this one i'm pretty sure i could just use one of my own beading needles it came with just plain white floss to attach the beads with. So there's like, you know, a couple of these and it's all just one, one strand. So they already have it. You don't have to break it up or anything. Um, let me show you the beads, the most important part. Because dude, look at that. I mean, what's not to love? It just doesn't get any better than that. Look at all these beads. I can't even explain to you how excited I am. And then this is... Yeah, so it's like... I don't know how... It's not... It's not canvas. So the front is has like a satin finish. And then the back... I don't know how to explain it. It's like a little, it's like a little fuzzy. I don't know if you could see it close. I guess some of the stuff, the beads or whatever, the packaging caught on it in certain areas. I don't know if you guys can see that. But it's like kind of weirdly fluffed in places. I don't know how to explain it. But this is the pattern or you know the fabric what you attach the beads to and then over here they have the color key 
and then these are the symbols um, I guess like just to let you know what size bead that you attach because there are so there's I think there's only there's only two different size beads I think I haven't really looked at it that closely because I'm afraid I'm gonna want to start it immediately but um, there's this oval shape and then these round shapes so I haven't really read the instructions yet, but I'm guessing. <laughs> and then, I don't know if you could see, but there's like little circles indicating where the beads go. So you just kind of, you know, cross stitch the beads into those little circles. They're on how to come up and down, but the closer I look at this, there are little interconnecting lines to show you, I guess, where you should come up and down with the needle and thread. Um, like this section right here, you can kind of see the little black lines interconnecting with little dots in between. Uh, I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm hoping that's what it is, but I'm too pumped. And I can't wait to start that. I don't know when I'm going to start that, to be honest with you. like. Pokemon. So Pokemon is obviously just going to be a stay at home project. I cannot carry that anywhere. I wouldn't, don't think I would be expected to. I would freak out something that big, you know, if I get it dirty. So that's obviously staying at home and they will probably be permanent, permanently on my uh, floor sand. But um, I might have I don't know, I might have another project going once I finish Hocus Pocus. Once I finish Hocus Pocus, I may start on that. I don't know, I can't commit to too many because having two projects on the go, even though they're different crafts, the 5D Crystal Cross Stitch and Hocus Pocus, um, I think two is enough, honestly. I want to start a lot more. But I just, I don't, I don't know. I can't, I can't handle it because I would feel like if I start another project, working on that project while I could be working on Hocus Pocus is just taking me that much longer to complete Hocus Pocus. So I don't think I could do it. But um, in addition to that, I subscribed to one month of the Stitchy Box just to see what it was like, to see if I liked it. And I did make an unboxing video, so I should have that uploaded in a couple of days or so after this video. If you guys want to check that out to see what's included, it's the Christmas in July box. And I, I'm pretty impressed. I kind of like it. I think I might order it again. Um, I don't know if I will order a reoccurring monthly subscription. I might look at it. Um, but if not, you know, maybe like the Christmas, the Advent calendar one, or the Halloween one, I have to see. I do know that um, the subscriptions, they fill up really fast. They had to be put on a waiting list for probably two months before I finally got in. And then um, I was giving a discount code for anybody who wanted to purchase it. Um, it was, I think it's specific to me. So I'm going to put that discount code in the unboxing video and the comments below. So if you guys are interested, hopefully that discount still works and you can apply it or try to apply it to your next purchase or subscription with Stitchy Box. And like I said, I, I liked it. It was pretty cool. I never, you know, had a box. I've had subscription boxes before, but nothing cross stitch related. And that's the only thing that I can find out there right now. I know you guys, you do like fabric of the month and Moe's specialty floss. Like, I don't know. I can't find that stuff. I don't know where to go to sign up. Maybe it's because they're full, like Stitchy Box was, which is why I can't sign up for it. Because I think I did try to sign up for um, Under the Sea Fabrics, the um, fabric a month, but I think, I don't think she was taking any more subscriptions. So, bummer. So that's about it guys. I did purchase the next two series of Princesses 
from Pinky the Pink Shop on Etsy. I'll try to put some pictures or links below. I got Kita from Atlantis, Elsa, Anna, Aurora, and Ariel. And I want to get Esmeralda and um, Belle. Those are my next two purchases that I want to get. They are limited edition. I think she's only selling 50 of each and they're all hand signed by the artist who originally drew them. She just got permission to convert them into cross stitch patterns. So um, I got I got fabric for Milan, I got beads for Milan and Merida, and then I just um, need to get the beads for the other princesses and their specialty threads like DMC Light Effects and Krennic. So I need to get those and obviously the fabric. So I don't know when I'll start those, but you know, maybe, maybe we'll see what happens once I finish Hocus Pocus and the Peacock. Things can always change. <laughs> All right guys, that's the end of this video. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I should get back to you, fingers crossed, really soon. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.